We'll talk about his speech a little bit later, but now over to President Biden's effort to win the black vote. Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson is live at the White House tonight. Lucas. Good evening, Katie. It's quite a crew you have up there in New York. That's right. Earlier today, President Biden speaking at a campaign event in Atlanta, a small room full of about 100 people, where he appeared to forget the name of his 2020 campaign co-chairman. You realize how insufferable it's going to be now with my chief guy used to be. What's his name? I can't think of it now. He used to, he used to be a Morehouse guy. Well, well, what's his name? Yeah, Cedric something. Biden also f appeared to forget the name of the college where he's speaking tomorrow morning and giving the commencement address. I'm going Sunday to make a speech at that other place. Uh, that, that man's called More, is it Morehouse. Morehouse. And here's the Morehouse College president laying down some ground rules about the graduation ceremony tomorrow. What we won't allow is uh, disruptive behavior that prevents the uh, ceremony or services from proceeding in a manner that those in attendance can uh, partake uh, and enjoy. So, for example, prolonged shouting down of the president as he is speaking. I will. Uh, cease the ceremonies on the spot if we were to reach that position. Now, a new Fox News poll shows Biden losing 7 percent of the black vote nationwide and young people, too. Biden's down 14 percent compared to just four years ago. Perhaps a reason Biden is speaking at an historically black college tomorrow, Morehouse College, which not only is historically black, but also all male uh, two demographics that Biden needs to win re-election in 2024. All right, we'll be watching tomorrow. Thank you, Lucas. And tonight, the mainstream media is worried that Biden is losing the black vote. The New York Times is out with a new piece from the Biden's, quote, beloved Philadelphia. The article reads in part, in interviews with nearly two dozen voters in predominantly black neighborhoods in Philadelphia this week, as well as with elected officials and strategists, signs of softness in Mr. Biden's standing were palpable. Just eight voters, eight, said they were committed to voting for Mr. Biden, while many others were debating staying home or in a few cases, supporting former President Donald Trump. So, Molly, the president is getting ready for this big speech tomorrow. He's getting a lot of help. Uh, CNN reporting this, saying Team Biden uh, is consulting prominent Morehouse alumni to craft their commencement speech and expected to raise student voices. They're also saying discussion behind the scenes has been delicate, that this has been, you know, the planning of this has been going on for a couple of weeks, and they're worried that the student achievements may be overshadowed by a stump speech. So what is your take on this positioning for the president tomorrow in Georgia? Well, he should be talking to some prominent alum. He needs help to get through this event. There are many things, landmines, he has to avoid. It's not just that his support among black voters is softening. It's also that his support among young people are softening. And then you've also got the issue that a lot of dec Democrat special interest groups are fomenting <laughs> protests on campuses nationwide. So it's, it's going to be a tough thing for him. And so um, it's, it's probably in his best interest that he's getting a lot of help. But just the stunning difference between when you see him up there struggling through a very small, low-pressure event versus what you're seeing with President Trump being put on trial by Democrats who are trying to imprison him mm -hmm. and managing to run a campaign at the same time. I mean, the level of difficulty that we're seeing here is sky high for one and very low for the well, other. Well, and you mentioned the president talking to alum, alums of Morehouse College. Maybe he, if we can't remember their names, it's going to be a problem for him in preparing for this speech. Uh, but Tom, you know, the students are also being asked about what's going to happen tomorrow with the president's visit. And a young man named Malik, who told a local TV station, he says, it's so obvious that it's just about the presidential campaign. Yeah. So, well, I mean, obviously, and that's the season we're coming into. We're going to expect uh, President Biden to be approaching everything from a political angle. You, you know, that's to be expected. But my question is, why did this take so long? The idea that, oh, oh, now black voters are suddenly seeing, you know, something in President Trump. I've often wondered why Republicans have dropped the ball with black voters 
They never even try. And the idea that they, they, would, they should approach the black community at every election and say, what have these people done for you lately? What have the Democrats done for you? And look at their record and really make a play for those kind of votes. At least President Trump, I mean, what was the phrase he used last time? What, what have you got to lose? Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of where I would approach it. What have you got to lose or what have they done for you lately? And historically, when you have the black vote at approaching 90%, for Democrats, those are like the numbers that third world dictators get when they're the only one on the ballot. Mm -hmm. So I think that it's high time and maybe things are going to change. I, I expect them to change more. The fact that, you know, oh, Donald Trump has 23 percent of the black vote. I expect it to go a little higher because, you know, and it's not about personality. It's about the fact that they can look around and see what's happening in the world and access to information. Everybody amongst them, they can talk, they can look at their phones, they see what's happening in the country. And they are in the same economy as everyone else. Young people black voters, we all see what's happening. So. so, Griff, we've seen also on top of the president's visit to Morehouse College tomorrow, the White House talking about reclassifying marijuana, and we're also now hearing from the Democratic senator from Georgia about this. Let's take a listen. Entire black and brown communities have been hollowed out by the enforcement of Marijuana, so often the war on drugs has been a war on black and brown and poor communities. This is a step in the right direction and long overdue. Black communities have, have seen far more devastation from the enforcement uh, of marijuana than the drug itself. So they're trying to couple this visit with some policy mm -hmm. changes as well. Well, we'll see. I don't think Raphael Warnock can do what Jim Clyburn did in 2020 in South Carolina when Joe Biden, the candidate, was dead on arrival in South Carolina and the black vote put him in the White House in this term right now. And the marijuana, I understand the marijuana argument. It's been around for years. But you walk around the streets in New York, D.C., everybody's smoking weed. So I'm not <laughs> sure it's going to deliver the results they want. We'll have to watch and see. We will be watching, that's for sure. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.